Alright, what's up everyone? This is Ninja Deathstrike bringing you part two of my tutorial for uh, the Pokemon TCGO. Uh, last time I talked about trainers, so today I'm going to start real quick with uh, the energy type since there's only, I think, like four special energies to talk about, and then uh, go over to primes, talk about the primes a little bit, and maybe hit legends too, and um, we'll see how much time I've spent rambling after that, and uh, go from there. So let's start with the energy. They kind of go hand in hand with trainers. Um, you have two types, basic and special. Basic there's no reason to talk about. Um, it's just your regular energy. You can have as many of them in the deck as you want and they give it to you for free. So you don't need to get anything here. Uh, what we want to talk about is special. And you'll see... Um, actually let me set up a trade so you can see everything with the art. So we've got um, four kinds of special energy starting with dark, dark energy um, and these special energy cards are like any other cards in your deck they are not unlimited you can only have four of them at a time in your deck so they're uh, just like the the rest of the cards that you're going to be using and so you have to think about um, if you want them and how many you want so our first one is darkness energy and uh, basically what it does is if you attach this to a dark Pokemon, all of their attacks do 10 more damage before applying weakness and resistance. So you can uh, get some pretty big damage boost with this, but it doesn't see a whole lot of play just because there aren't that many decks that run dark types. Um, there's Weevil, and there is... Uh, now. Zorark is gaining popularity, and some decks that have Zorark will run a Darkness Energy since it basically acts like a plus power on him. So it can be really helpful there, especially against uh, either of the dragons, Reshiram or uh, Zekrom, since with one Darkness Energy, Zorark will be able to one-hit KO them by using Foul Play. So uh, it'll show up from time to time, but doesn't get used a whole lot and next we have double colorless energy and so this is a really simple card just provides two colorless energy that means that you can't use it for a specific type but it lets you attach two energy at once which is huge this is by far the most common special energy that you'll see it's run in nearly every deck um, just because a lot of Pokemon have attacks that need one or two type of specific energy and then two double colorless and uh, so it's really really helpful it's also the most valuable so if you're looking to buy some you're probably gonna have to pay uh, a pack or two to get a hold of it but definitely worth having especially if you're running lots of attackers that have that double colorless cost where it doesn't matter what kind of energy you're putting on them this will let you power them up uh, turn quicker which can be huge so a really important card. Next we have Metal Energy. This is kind of the counterpart to Dark. Instead of adding damage, it decreases the damage your opponent does to you. And it only works on Steel-type Pokemon. Uh, this doesn't see a whole lot of play. Just because Steel is kind of the worst type right now. Um, it's normally weak to Fire, which means Typhlosion and Reshiram just rip through it. And there aren't that many really great Pokemon that are Steel-type right now. So it definitely can work if you're running a heavy Steel deck. You're going to want four of these. And the damage reduction is really nice. But um, unless you're using lots of Steel-types, you can skip this one. And next we have Rainbow Energy. And uh, Rainbow Energy, when you attach it to a Pokemon, it counts as any type of energy you want it to. And more importantly, it counts as that as all types of energy simultaneously. So it's not just, oh, it's a grass energy. Um, it can change whenever you want it to and whenever you need it to. And so that lets it play a, a key role in a couple of big cards, especially with Roserade from the Undaunted set. If you attach a grass and psychic energy to it, it can poison and confuse your opponent, and so if you put a rainbow energy on, it does both at the same time. The only downside of this is that when you attach it to a Pokemon, that Pokemon takes 10 damage. So that can be a bit of a hindrance, but 
it's really not that big a deal for what you're getting out of it and uh, a lot of decks that run multiple types or run things that need uh, extra types of energy will run a few of these and especially any deck with Mew usually runs this since Mew can use all the attacks in the Lost Zone uh, he usually needs a variety of energy types to do that so this is a, a pretty common one to see as well and finally we have Rescue Energy Rescue Energy provides a single colorless energy and when the Pokemon it's attached to gets knocked out you get to put all of the Pokemon so that Pokemon and all of its evolutions back into your hand instead of putting them into the discard pile and this is a really great energy to have uh, the downside is that it's only one energy and it's only color colorless so it can be uh, a little bit hard to find a turn to play it but it can definitely be worth it since once the Pokemon you have it on gets knocked out you don't lose access to that card and you can play it right back down on your bench the next turn so this is a good card as well if you can find room to get it in and that will take care of the energy so now let's look at let's do legends first there are a few fewer of those so it'll probably take less time to get through um, legends are cards that uh, there are two cards that form together to make one playable Pokemon, and they were a new thing introduced, I believe, with the Heart Gold Soul Silver set. Uh, some of them are really great, and some of them are really awful. They don't see a whole lot of play; they're kind of specialty cards. But I'll go ahead and cover them, so you can see here. They're big. They're two pieces of a card, so you can't play one on your bench unless you have both halves of it. And let's take a look first here with Ho-Oh Legend. You can see uh, this does not count as a basic Pokemon. It counts as a Pokemon Legend. It's kind of in its own class. You can see here the artwork on all of these cards is really cool. And uh, 140 hit points, so lots of hit points. Go down here, uh, weakness, resistance, standard stuff. And Ho-Oh can do 100 damage, but you have to discard an energy attached to it. And it does have a poke body that allows all energy attached to it to count as fire energy. So that's really nice. It means that you can play it in any deck. Um, but the 100 damage for the fire energy just really doesn't fit into any decks. It's not that it's a bad card. It's just that there are better cards. Uh, the other fire types are going to be discarding more energy, but they're going to be hitting for bigger damage. And the two main fire decks out right now both have a way to reattach energy every turn. So generally, ho is just going to be outclassed by things like uh, Reshiram and uh, Embor. So he won't get used a whole lot. But if you do happen to get a hold of one for cheap, it's, it's really not that bad of a card. The only thing to be concerned about and this goes for all legend cards is that if it gets knocked out your opponent gets to draw two prizes so you need to be aware of that because it's so big um, they get to take two prizes if they take it down and next we have uh, Lugia legend 130 HP so a little bit less and his attack ocean glow once during your turn when you put Lugia legend onto the bench Excuse me. You can uh, search the top five cards of your deck and attach all the energy to it. So that's nice. But let's look at his attack, Elemental Blast. It needs a Fire, Water, and Lightning energy to work, and you have to discard one of each. Now it hits for 200 damage, which is an Oko on any Pokemon in the game. But uh, it takes three different kinds of energy to work, and that is not good. Um, especially because the main Pokemon that are going to let you attach energies, extra energies, only let you attach fire. So you still don't have a way to get the water and the lightning on there on the same turn unless you somehow manage to get Embor and Feraligator on your bench and can put a lightning energy down. So really, the attack's just too expensive to work and um, that's why it doesn't get played and I'm actually looking at this card now go back to the top um, I think that just with Lugia and Ho-Oh 
your opponent does only get to draw one prize. That changes later, but I guess these were the first two. So they're a little bit safer in that they don't cost you two prizes if they get knocked out. It's just really hard to find a place for them. So let's go to the next one. Darkrai Cresselia Legend. Uh, I love the artwork on this card. And you can see he's got 150 hit points. And now we get into the double legends. So now there's two of them combined into one card. Darkrai on the top. We got Crest down here. Uh, Lost Crisis makes you choose two energy attached to um, Darkrai Cresselia Legend and put them into the Lost Zone. And um, if you knock out your opponent, you can put all of the cards that were attached to it into the Lost Zone as well. Um... Again, this has the same problem as Ho-Oh in that it can't use this attack every turn. For anything where you're discarding energies, if you can't keep it consistently going every turn, eventually you're going to fall behind. So the side effect isn't that good when you look at the cost. Now, Moon's Invite is an interesting attack. For one psychic energy, it lets you move damage counters around on your opponent's Pokemon however you want. So that can have some applications. It lets you uh, move around damage. It's really crippling to um, Vileplume decks or Reuniclus decks since they rely on moving the energy. You can move it right back, but generally this is one of the least played legends. It just it doesn't do a whole lot and it takes up too much room, too hard to get on the field. So. Yeah, here you can see this is the first one where they get to draw two prizes um, since there's two Pokemon on the card. Next we have Entei and Raikou Legend. We can see up here 140 hit points. And also something I, I should touch on, if you look here, let's go back to Crest 2. Uh, a lot of the problem with these double legends is that they have no resistance and two weaknesses. So it gets kind of easy to hit them for weakness and then they get hit for weakness and end up getting one hit KO'd anyhow even though they have so many um, hit points and then your opponent gets two prizes. So that's another reason they don't get played a whole lot. But let's look at Entei Raikou. You can see his attacks are very cheap uh, especially compared to the other legends we've looked at. Only two energy for each. Detonation spin, 90 damage and discard a fire energy. Same thing as Ho-Oh, just doesn't do enough damage, and it's outclassed by others. And then Thunderfall, discard all energies, and this attack does 80 damage to each Pokemon that has any poke powers, both yours and your opponent's. Uh, that's kind of an interesting attack. I'm sure that you could build a deck around this, especially because it'll hit, uh, it'll overload damage with Gothitelle or Reuniclus. Um, it'll hit a lot of the bench sitters in... Typhlosion, Embor decks, you'll hit all of their main bench sitters for 80. You can score uh, Okos on some of the, the smaller stuff, like Ninetales. So this is definitely a workable attack. Uh, but again, um, oh, okay. Again, uh, just not that great um, overall, but better than Cress. And definitely workable if you wanted to put some thought into making a deck out of this. You could probably do it. So next, we have Kyogre Groudon Legend. Um, this one is one of the better legends, actually, probably in the top three. And you'll see why when we look at the attacks here. Um, first of all, let's go back. 150 hit points is good. Just out of the range where uh, Magnazone and Embor would have a hard time knocking it out, but still very, very solid. And now we have the attacks. You can see both of them are really expensive, four energies apiece, and weak to Lightning and Grass. Lightning is not going to be great since Zekrom is so popular, but Grass is a good weakness to have. Uh, Yen Mega can do a lot of damage, but he can't one-hit KO it without a plus power, so okay weaknesses, uh, but the, really the reason this card is um, is workable is because of the attacks. Uh, Mega Tidal Wave, discard the top five cards of your opponent's deck, so you get to discard five cards off of their deck. That's huge in and of itself. And then this attack does 30 damage times the number of energy you discarded to each of your opponent's Pokemon, so that's a nice uh, little side effect. Uh, you can hit a bunch of their guys for a, a okay amount of damage, but it'll really stack up if they have a full bench. 
um, and it'll stack up quickly if you use it multiple times in a row. But the real thing here is discarding five cards uh, makes it pretty easy to deck your opponent out if you can keep a couple of these guys up and running, which is hard since the attack cost is so high. And on the other hand, we have Massive Eruption, and that's the reverse. You discard five energies, uh, five cards off of your deck, and you do 100 damage to the active times the number of energies. So basically, if you... If you get rid of two energies, you kill whatever's out. No questions asked. 200 damage, done. So this is a playable card. Very expensive and uh, tricky to get into play, but usable. And um, it sees a lot of play, or not, I shouldn't say a lot. It sees some play in a Vile Plume Reuniclus decks because its HP is so high and it has that nice factor of disruption. Um, it gets out into the active position and becomes very hard to kill with help from Reuniclus. And now we come to Palkia and Dialgo Legend. The hands down worst Legend card there is. Now, it's got 160 hit points, which is great because it means not a whole lot is going to be one hit KO in this. Uh, and it's going to take four energy for Magnezone Prime to manage, to manage it. But, let's look at its attacks. First, Sudden Delete. Choose one of your opponent's benched Pokemon, so you can't even pick the active. Put that Pokemon and all cards attached to it back into your opponent's hand. Horrible attack. A um, couple of things could have made it better if you could pick the active, and if it got shuffled into the deck, it would be devastating. But putting it into the hand basically is only going to buy you a turn or two until it, sh until it shows up again. And if it's a basic it's going to be back the next turn. So I'm not going to do a whole lot of good. Now the other attack, Time Control, discard all Steel Energy attached to Palkia Dialgo Legend and add the top two cards of your opponent's deck to his or her prize cards. This is actually a really cool attack, I think. Um, basically it, it makes it really hard for your opponent to win since you're adding two prizes to them. The only problem is you have to discard all that energy and there's no way to get it back on there the next turn. So you can't use it every turn. And um, Dialga and Palkia don't have an attack to tie it with. You know, if Sudden Delete actually did damage or something useful, this would be a great card. Or at least a playable one. But as it stands, it can do no damage. All it can do is stall and really just stall the inevitable. So a bad card. And it's, it's basically worthless. No one wants it. Don't, uh, don't go after this one. Next we have Raikou and Suicune Legend. Um, again, 160 hit points. That's fantastic. A great number there. Um, but he has the weakness to electricity, so Magnezone's still going to be able to take him out for two energies. And uh, also weak to fighting, but Donphan won't be able to take it out unless it's using... Um, its second attack, hammer arm or whatever it is. So let's look at the attacks though. Thunderbolt Spear, 150 damage. And um, Raikou Suku Legend does 50 damage to itself. So that's not great, but 150 damage is fantastic. And uh, you don't have to discard any energy. So this is kind of like a souped up version of Bolt Strike from Zekrom. So it's a very good attack. On the other hand, we have Aura Gain. Uh, remove five damage counters from Suicune Entei Legend. So I guess the idea is to use Thunderbolt Sphere and then follow it up with Aura Gain. That could work, but since it only does 50 damage, you're only going to be able to use it as like a cleanup kill or against a, a normal basic. Usually you're just going to be doing damage to yourself and then getting revenge killed. And for that reason, it's a little hard to play. It is playable, though, um, but just... It's not going to be around for long because it hurts itself. So you can use it to come in, nuke something, and uh, then hopefully retreat it back to the bench since it only has one retreat cost. Uh, next we have Rayquaza Deoxys Legend, the best legend card that there is. Uh, right here we see it's got 140 hit points, so that's mediocre. Weaknesses to Psychic and Colorless. Um, that means Mew can take it out, Gothitelle can take it out, uh, any Psychic type really, and the occasional colorless Pokemon that'll see play, maybe like a Yurt, 
uh, Ursa Ring Prime or something would also be able to deal with it. But the key to this card is in its Pokebody, Space Virus. If your opponent's Pokemon is knocked out by damage from an attack by Rayquaza Deoxys Legend, take one more prize card. So um, you get two prizes for every kill, which is amazing. And if you somehow manage to snag a Legend kill, you get three prizes. So that's half of your prizes for one Pokemon. Um, and on top of that, it has a great attack. Ozone Buster does 150 damage, but you have to discard the fire energies. Now, like I said before, discarding energies more than one is usually not great, but because they're fire energy, there are two Pokemon that excel at stacking multiple fire energies in one turn, and that is uh, Embor and Typhlosion. So this is a, a very viable legend, uh, definitely the most expensive and the most um, played probably and finally we have the second best legend Suicune Entei legend you can see that nice beefy 160 hit points uh, weak to electric so Magnezone can take it out also weak to water which is kinda weird since it is water uh, but water decks aren't too common Blastoise shows up from time to time but um, he's not too common, so not having that fire weakness is nice, and uh, the psychic weakness is handy too. And now let's take a look at his attacks. Uh, fairly affordable. This one's a little expensive since it takes two specifically water energies. Um, and let's see what it does. It says, return two water energy attached to Sukun Entei Legend to your hand. Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. This attack does 100 damage, so... It's nice because it lets you snipe. So again, even though you're removing two energies, um, you're getting a really great side effect in the fact that you can snipe the bench and take out something that they don't want taking damage. Um, this would be really great to snipe out like a Reuniclus or something that tried to escape to the bench earlier. And if you play this card in a water deck with, say, uh, for Alligator Prime, you can put those two water energy back on because water does have an accelerator. So if you uh, want to try out a Feraligator Prime deck, this wouldn't be a bad card to consider um, trying out there. The other attack, Bursting Inferno, takes only a single fire and the other two colorless, and it automatically burns. So you've got potential for 100 damage here if they get a bad flip. Guaranteed 80. Um, overall, this is a really solid card. Uh, the big hit points mean that it shows up quite a bit in Vile Plume Reuniclus decks since it's very hard to one-hit KO. It allows them to move that damage off and just keep pounding you with it. So that's going to do it for the Legends. Looks like we're at 23 minutes. So I'm going to end this chapter here and I'll get to the Primes next time. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope that uh, seeing how some of these cards works will um, encourage you to get involved in the game and uh, stay tuned I will have a couple of actual battles coming or at least one battle coming later this week uh, maybe another section of this tutorial as well so I hope you're uh, enjoying it and I will talk to you guys soon thanks